We're coming to you from the University of Bedfordshire television yeah. studio. And for the first time ever, we're completely live and anything could go wrong. You told me this was going to be professional. I'm sick of this! No, it's over! It's done! You! This is just complete sh**. <laughs> so that's what you might have been expecting. But come on, we're far too professional for that. Welcome to the TV lab. I hope you're sitting comfortably because for the first time ever, we're broadcasting live from the University of Bedfordshire. We and I've got a feeling you'll be staying with us for the next few hours. We'll be showing you the best in student films, documentaries, studio TV work, animation and more. All this, plus we'll be talking to some very clever and interesting people. And we're even giving away two, that's right, two £50 Amazon vouchers. £50. <laughs> and you can leave your comments for us on Twitter at TV Lab 2012, 2011, sorry, let me start again. <laughs> hold it, hold up. <laughs> what we're gonna do, we're gonna let you get in contact with us on Twitter, Twitter. at TV Lab 2011, or get involved on the TV Lab Facebook page. Also, if you've got any questions for the guests coming later in the show, just tweet or Facebook them, and we'll try and ask. Now, would you like a job in the media? Well, get your questions together, mm -hmm. because we've got a careers advisor coming up later. Maybe you want to be a DJ, Maybe. if that's the case. We've got the Radio Lab guys coming in, ready to answer all your questions. What else we got? Well, there's so much coming up, it's hard to say it all now. Mm. Maybe we need some kind of pre-recorded roundup. You know, with little clips to show the audience what's in store. You know, with a nice voiceover, mm. nice neat package. Probably about 30 seconds 30 long. Seconds long. Mm. Here it is. So we've got the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Les Ebden, CBE. We'll be showing you some great documentaries, short films and animation. We'll be talking to the guys who run the highly successful Radio Lab. Igor Drozdov will be in talking about his award-winning documentary. Plus, we'll be giving away £100 worth of Amazon vouchers in our Spot the Veg and Watch and Win competitions. And you can keep in touch by Facebook and Twitter. So you need to keep watching because at any time throughout the show, there could be a vegetable on set. Mm. It might, be, it might be slightly hidden, it could be in my hand, but you will be able to see it. And if you're the first person to spot that vegetable, then text us because you could be the lucky winner of £50 worth of Amazon vouchers. It's that simple. It could be a parsnip, it could be a turnip, I mean, it could be any sort of vegetable. But at some point in the next couple of hours, you will see one. When you do, text us on 07426797472 with your name and the type of vegetable. There will also be another chance to win another £50 voucher coming later in the show, so don't go anywhere. I'll give you the number again, it's 07426 797 472. You can also find it on our webpage or on our Facebook. So make sure you have it handy because the first person to text us in with the correct answer will win that prize. And they surely will, so keep your eyes peeled. But first, we've got the top man on campus. He's lectured in six continents around the world. He's chaired the university think tank million plus. He's the Vice Chancellor of this university. He's now a commander of the British Empire and he's a thoroughly nice chap. Professor Les Ebden, CBE. Welcome, Professor. Good to be here. <laughs> what do you think about our first live broadcast from it, the university? <laughs> it's terribly exciting, isn't it? I just wish everybody <laughs> could be here and, and catch the sense of real excitement there is mm. uh, here as, uh, as you make this first live television broadcast. Of course, we, we're experienced in doing radio, but for the first time, here we are on television as well. Mm -hmm. How good is the student work here that you've seen before? I've seen some outstanding pieces of, of student work from, from this uh, university, um, uh, sometimes very creative, uh, sometimes very challenging mm. and, and demanding. Um, I think some of the documentaries I've seen have been uh, exceptionally good. Mm. Are there any standout documentaries that you can think of or they're just all together? Well, I do remember one at the time of the uh, anniversary of the uh, Normandy landings and, mm -hmm. and one of the students actually managed to uh, track down one of the veterans who wow. played a very key role in the Normandy landings and it was a very moving interview because um, uh, suddenly uh, uh, the realisation came to the student and me as somebody watching it uh, that the student was the same age 
as this grandfather who he was interviewing was uh, when he'd uh, had the job of taking out uh, a very wow, formidable um, gun emplacement uh, over the beaches in Normandy. And if they hadn't have done that, of course, many more would have died. Mm. I just want to give the opportunity for people at home just to yeah. be able to get a question to you, Les, if yeah. that's OK. Um, don't forget, if you have got a question, tweet us or Facebook us and we'll do our best to ask it. Um, one thing, obviously, you're deeply involved in is the uh, Million Plus. Um, can you just tell me a bit about it for somebody who doesn't know? <laughs> yes, Million Plus is, uh, is, as you just described it, a university think tank. Uh, mm -hmm. There are um, uh, about 30 universities that subscribe to, uh, uh, to, to Million Plus, and we try to set the agenda in, in, in higher education. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when there was um, all the debate about um, uh, raising fees, uh, mm -hmm. we commissioned some research on London economics uh, which showed that a graduate tax would be both fairer uh, and would be less costly. Yeah. Unfortunately, it wasn't taken up, but no. uh, that's the kind of thing that we do. Why, why would that have worked better? Why would the graduate tax have actually... Well, the, the, the collecting of fees, uh, uh, as you know, you don't pay the fees up front mm. under the new system. You collect them in a, uh, later and only when you're earning above a, a, a certain amount. Yeah. But you pay the same amount of, of, of money, um, no matter how big um, uh, your debt is. It's, it's a very complex and complicated system. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, we have mechanisms already uh, to, to set uh, levels of taxation. And we can make it fairer because it could be adjusted to how much people gain from yeah. being a student uh, uh, and uh, uh, it, uh, it would have been a much more efficient tax to collect than the present graduate mm. contributions. So the students that you've spoken to, I mean, do you get a general feeling of anger or are there some students who think maybe it's a positive thing? I mean, what, what's your general feel that you get from the students at the campus here? Well, obviously it doesn't affect current students, mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the, the big it's rise in free levels, but, but talking to, to students who are coming through, uh, they feel it's unfair because, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and I'd have to agree with them, I got my education free, uh, I even got a grant that meant um, uh, that uh, I didn't go into debt at all when I was a, a student, um, I, I came uh, from a, a council estate, I went to, uh, to, to university and it transformed my life and <laughs> uh, look at me now, it's... Um, it's uh, uh, and I just um, really regret that uh, there won't be the same level of investment uh, by the government into tomorrow's students. So I share their sense of disappointment, do, frustration, do, and anger. Do you think that this will deeply affect admissions and, and the number of mm. people ad applying to university? Because you know you're talking about yourself coming from um, a council estate, um, and the fact that these these people just will not apply for university at all. And I know that with a million plus, you try to encourage uh, people who are on lower income to go to university. Yes. How, how is this going to affect the numbers of people that, that apply? Well, I desperately hope uh, that it won't um, mm. uh, dramatically affect. I think um, uh, I'd be very surprised if there wasn't um, a, a drop in, in applications uh, next year, the first year in which it is uh, mm. in, in operation. Uh, we have to get the message out there that it is still the best investment you can make in yourself. Um, uh, graduates on average earn £140,000 more over their career than mm -hmm. non-graduates. Right. They have a number of other um, uh, uh, advantages as a graduate. Um, you have a, a wider understanding of, of culture, you get international opportunities, um, uh, you um, uh, have a great time as a student, your horizons mm. are opened, you become better citizens, in fact mm. you're even less likely to suffer from crime uh, uh, oh. and, um, <laughs> and your health is likely to be better. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's some uh, real advantages of being a, a graduate which will remain there. Being devil's advocate here, I mean some may say that if we place a, a price on students having to, to study or get that degree, it places more importance on the degree or they value it a little bit more. I mean, does that does that resonate with you and at all? Well, I think that will be one of the advantages of the system, mm -hmm. and I think that um, uh, we've already seen it with the introduction of the three thousand pound fee that uh, yeah. that students are more demanding of their university, and that's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. We try to run a student-centred university here. We try to put uh, the interests of students um, uh, at, at the top of, of, of the agenda, uh, and any university that doesn't do that in the future is going to be in difficulty. I was reading a report, Professor, um, that the BBC did, I think they did it recently in the last 24 hours or something, which said that uh, when they talked to, to universities, it looked as if over 50% would, and it was, the figure was 54%, would almost certainly go for that top bracket of tuition which fees, which would be up to £9,000. Um, do you think that is going to happen? I've always said that will happen, um, uh, and uh, <laughs> it was Oscar Wilde, I think, who said there's nothing we learn from history other than the fact we don't learn from history. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, every time it's been possible to raise fees, uh, they've gone up within a year or so 
at, to the highest possible level. I fee. mean, the government did say, I mean, their advice was or that it would only happen in exceptional circumstances. But I mean, I think 32 out of 44 universities so far have opted for that high fee. So you think that's just the trend and that's what will happen? Within two years, I think everybody will be at the maximum. Really? I, I don't know whether the government was naive or deliberately misleading when they made that statement. How difficult is it for you, um, you know, obviously trying to campaign for lower fees, mm -hmm. working in an institution such as the University of Bedfordshire, um, how difficult is for you to, to try and, and, and make sure that the fees are not going to be of a maximum here at the University of Bedfordshire? Well, frankly, it's impossible because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. reason that people are going for £9,000 fees is because there has been, on average across the sector, an 80% cut in teaching income from the Higher Education Fund and Council for England. Mm. Uh, for us, it'll be over 90% because of the mix of subjects mm. um, uh, that, that we do. Um, therefore, you are faced with setting higher fees, and do you actually uh, try and maintain the level of student experience, knowing that students are, are paying this much extra? Um, mm. Or do you uh, introduce major efficiencies, cost savings, which means staff cuts, uh, and, uh, and charge a lower fee? I know, I know that, um, well, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm under the belief that um, you haven't made a decision here at the University, University of Bedfordshire, of Bedfordshire. as of yet. Is, are you any closer to making a decision on what those tuition fees would be? Well, in the post-92 universities, it's the Board of Governors who legally um, are obliged to set the fees for, for the university. Uh, and, uh, and the uh, Board of Governors um, are, are taking this task uh, very seriously. Mm. Uh, by April, the... Um, uh, 19th, we will have to submit to the Office of Fair mm. Access our fees. I think you'll find they'll be in the range 6,000 to 9,000. Right, yeah. um, mm. And uh, uh, they will be, at the higher level, they will be coupled with a very attractive package uh, to promote access and retention. And don't forget, mm. we offer the best bursary scheme in the south of England, not um, my words, but the, <laughs> what the Guardian newspaper said. OK, well, uh, I'll trust the Guardian newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. Les, thank, thank you. you so much for coming in. Hopefully we'll get to uh, speak to you again sometime soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.